Thank you for joining us. Our show today will illustrate a part of World War II history that few people are aware of. Nazi submarines were prowling off the U.S. coast, attacking and sinking many defenseless ships, causing many casualties and great damage. Our guests today are Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Christina Zarilli and Colonel Buddy Harris. He's one of the World War II sub-chasers who served with valor to defend America during those crucial years. They'll tell us about the essential role the United States Air Force Auxiliary Civil Air Patrol has played since World War II up until the present time, following a video and these messages. In the early days of World War II, Coastal Patrol 3 flew along the Florida East Coast in search of the German U-boats that menaced our shipping lanes. It's a story of patriotism, courage, and sacrifice. Civilian aviators pointed out one of our greatest weaknesses, our vulnerable coastlines. We were ill-equipped to defend our shores and the shipping lanes filled with freighters and tankers. Gil Rob Wilson, the director of aviation for New Jersey, met a German military officer who told him, your east coast is the best hunting ground in the world for submarines. Some of the busiest shipping lanes in the country were in Florida's coastal waters. They were also one of the easiest places for enemy submarines to search for targets. Bound by the Bahama Bank on the east, and the Florida Peninsula on the west, ships were limited to a relatively narrow passageway for their trips to and from supply depots that lined the Gulf Coast. Northbound tankers and freighters used the strong northerly current of the Gulf Stream to speed them to their destinations. Southbound ships, usually empty, were able to cruise the calmer waters between the Gulf Stream and the coast of Florida. Both were easy targets. With us now is Colonel Buddy Harris and Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Christine Zerulli. It's a real pleasure to have you with us on the show finally. A real pleasure and a privilege. Of course, the obvious question I'd like to start off with is, tell us a little bit about your experiences in World War II. Uh, as to what my career was in the, uh, during World War II, uh, it was rather curious. I, on the day after my 17th birthday, did volunteer uh, to the Army Air Corps as an aviation cadet. And uh, since I had uh, received my pilot's license at the early age of 15, I was able to pass the psychologicals, the psychomotors, the pilot proficiency requirements. And uh, I get, in fact, I got a 999, which is the highest that any enlistee could possibly get. So they accepted me immediately. And I went into basic training, completed my basic training, and went into pilot training. And curiously, after the first two weeks of pilot training, uh, the commander of the Army Air Corps at that time, uh, General Hap Arnold, issued an order that no pilot training cadet can be under the age of 18. Well, there were like 5,000 of me all over the United States, so all of the base commanders that had cadets under the age of 18 uh, asked, well, what do we do with them? And uh, uh, General Arnold responded back, put them on temporary duty in the Civil Air Patrol. So we were all immediately assigned to the Civil Air Patrol, and when they, uh, I was assigned to the New York Wing, and when they learned that I had a pilot's license, they immediately assigned me to submarine patrol duty and coastal patrol duty, and as a communication instructor. So that was my beginning of my career in the military during World War II. I was actually uh, in the Civil Air Patrol flying submarine patrol duty. Uh, and that's what I was doing uh, for one solid year before I went in, back into pilot training. Uh, Colonel Harris, uh, not everyone in the audience might know what the need for the submarine patrol was and why the Civil Air Patrol was necessary. Well, let me take you back uh, to the early 1940s and, uh, if you will, take a walk with me along any of the beaches along the Atlantic Ocean from Key West, Florida, clear up to Bangor, Maine. And if you were walking with me, it wouldn't be unusual for us to all of a sudden jerk because there's a huge explosion. And if we look seaward, we would see a submarine surfaced that was blowing a merchant marine ship right out of the water. And the seamen from the ship would be jumping overboard into flaming oil on the sea, which regrettably was usually a very fatal 
uh, uh, effect that they would receive. And this was going on up and down the East Coast, millions and millions of tons of vital supplies that we were trying to ship over to uh, our allies over in Britain and in Russia were going down to the bottom of the ocean. So with the shortage of equipment and air crews from the Air Force and the Air Corps at that time and uh, the Navy and the Coast Guard, the Civil Air Patrol was asked to get involved in chasing the submarines away from our coastline, and that was our job. So there was a very critical need. Colonel Harris, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about World War II, but I'd like to ask you, Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Christina, I'd like to ask you, what made you join the U.S. Air Force Auxiliary Civil Air Patrol? Well, um, when I was in middle school, I was very interested in flying. And uh, my grandfather recommended the Civil Air Patrol because I always wanted to learn to be a pilot and become an astronaut. So I heard about the Civil Air Patrol and um, I was really fascinated by the opportunities it offered both leadership and um, with flight and aerospace and everything like that. So I attended a couple meetings and really got hooked. Um, I've been a cadet now for whew, eight or nine years, quite a while, and I've progressed up the ranks, um, participating in everything the program has to offer. I've had a lot of great leadership experiences, as well as gained a lot of information on the aerospace side. I've earned a flight scholarship through Civil Air Patrol, which is going to allow me to get enough hours to get my solo, uh, my flight solo. And Civil Air Patrol has also sent me to Japan as an International Air Cadet Exchange um, Ambassador. And I got to spend three weeks in Japan um, meeting cadets in a similar program that they have. All those experiences have been so worthwhile and so great for my own personal growth and development. But the most um, memorable experience for me was when I worked with Colonel Harris during the hurricanes. And we worked um, day after day delivering food and ice to uh, the senior citizens that... And pizza. And pizza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to senior citizens who, whose houses had been devastated um, during the hurricanes. So that was probably the greatest experience I've had with the Civil Air Patrol, giving back to the community. And Colonel Harris was such a great motivation at that time for all the cadets. Well, you're very unusual because in our jaded society today in which people take so much for granted, uh, so much technology, so much uh, that the people can enjoy in life and be tempted away from taking life seriously, uh, people don't read enough, they, they are so much into entertainment and all of the other superficial aspects, the fun aspects of life. It is rather unusual that you take life so seriously. What's your view on the problems facing the youth of this country or modern civilization in general at this time? we tend to focus a lot on the negative. Uh, joining Civil Air Patrol has been a great way for me to contribute to my community and gain leadership experience and um, just become a great well-rounded citizen. So I think that more youth of today should get involved in community service organizations such as Civil Air Patrol um, because I, I've seen many cadets grow through the organization and uh, do lots of things for veterans and things like that. Uh, Civil Air Patrol has many veteran support programs um, in this day and age that's very, very important. And uh, I've seen many cadets move through the ranks and join the military and serve our country. And I think Civil Air Patrol is a great organization to motivate today's youth to really become productive members of society. Well, that's very interesting, uh, Christine, because uh, you're describing the youth of today and there are so many similarities to what you described with the motivated youth uh, through the military and through the Civil Air Patrol. It sort of matchmates exactly what our youth was and what I was back in the uh, early days of World War II. Uh, when we were flying submarine patrol, all of the 5,000 uh, cadets that were assigned by General Arnold, we were all flying submarine patrol. We were flying up and down the coastline of America, defending our ships and our merchant seamen from being destroyed by the uh, submarine packs, all of these Nazi submarines that were just cruising up and down the coastline of our uh, Atlantic Ocean. And it was like a shooting gallery for them. We were so undermanned, so under-equipped that we couldn't provide any aerial cover for them except for what we were providing. 
So we would fly up and down, weather permitting, every single day from dawn till dusk uh, looking for submarines. And when they would see us, of course, they would crash dive because they never knew whether we were armed or not. And we would dive down on them so they would assume we're coming on a, a bomb uh, drop and they would really crash dive and go, up, go under. And when they did that, then our ships could safely proceed out of the harbor and get into the convoy. And then they had destroyer protection so these subs would stay close to shore because that was their easy way to get all of our, uh, all of our uh, ships uh, to torpedo. So we would fly up and down, weather permitting, every single day. And we were bleary-eyed at the end of the day, looking for subs. And when we spotted, we spotted during the, uh, during the period that we were flying submarine patrol duty, we spotted 173 subs. Uh, we, uh, we reported 53 of them. We dropped bombs on 96 of them, and we actually sank two subs wow. that we were absolutely credited for. We think we had about four more probables, but we were absolutely credited with two sinkings. And it was very interesting. Uh, one would ask, was our mission successful? Uh, we, we were flying submarine patrol duty from 1943 to the middle of 1944. And at the end of 1945, when World War II ended, uh, Admiral Doinitz, who was one of the top Nazi uh, submarine admirals, uh, was asked, why did you ever pull your submarines away from the Atlantic coast and move them out to the North Sea? Why did you ever do that? And in a very angry way, he said, it was those, those darn yellow and red planes that kept chasing us, and that was us. So we actually forced the Nazi sub packs back to uh, the North Sea, which was very successful, and it saved millions and millions of tons of material, it saved thousands of seamen's lives, and it helped to win the war. So we were very proud of our success. Colonel Harris, this is all very interesting. And another thing we have not discussed is the fact that you may be finally awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, and I see you have quite a few other ribbons there. Tell us a little bit about some of those ribbons you have, sir. Oh, these are the various ribbons from the Civil Air Patrol as well as uh, my service in the uh, United States Air Force uh, during World War II. The one that I'm particularly proud of that I'm wearing is the Presidential Medal, uh, which I did receive from President Bush for service above self. and. Uh, I just learned recently that I am, I've been nominated for the uh, Congressional Medal of Honor for Service Above Self, and uh, it's a fairly new medal. Uh, prior to that, they've had the Congressional Medal of Valor, but they've now, since 2008, uh, established a Congressional Medal of Honor for Service Above Self, and uh, they award three medals per year uh, from the nominees. Uh, there are thousands of nominees, and I was so proud to learn that I was one of the 20 finalists for consideration for the medal. Well, that's very exciting, sir, and of course, very well deserved. Thank you. I have to ask you this question, which is a little awkward, but there you were, a teenager in World War II, serving your country in this horrific war, World War II, and knowing also that the Nazis were perpetrating atrocities against humanity, murdering millions of Jews in concentration camps. How did you feel as a young Jewish gentleman doing your part to fight Nazi Germany? Every one of us was so just embroiled in trying to defeat them for what they were doing. We felt they were just the cruelest imaginable enemies we could possibly ever, ever uh, be confronted with. And uh, in fact, when we stopped submarine patrol duty, uh, they assigned us to target towing, and we were towing targets for the gunnery uh, practice. And uh, we used to paint p uh, cartoon faces of uh, Hitler and Tojo on the targets just to improve the gunnery skills. Uh, we just so totally despised what they were doing. It was so totally new to us. We never dreamed that people could be so cruel. And I think the lesson that we taught them was whenever any enemy simply challenges our freedoms and our way of democracy, uh, they really uh, activate a very enraged tiger, and that's what we turn out to be. We're hard to beat. This is all very interesting. I'd like us to continue, but we must pause for these messages. We'll be right back. <music> we 
We're back with Colonel Buddy Harris and Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Christina Zarilli. Christina, I'd like to ask you, tell our audience the three mission uh, priorities of Civil Air Patrol. Civil Air Patrol has three main missions, cadet programs, aerospace education, and emergency services. The main focus of the cadet program is to um, teach cadets leadership experience and give them leadership experience so they can just become uh, better human beings and better citizens. Uh, it offers so many great opportunities, um, both with education and leadership and scholarships, and it's a really great program for today's youth. Uh, the main focus of aerospace education is to excite um, America about flying and space and all the opportunities that go along with that. And we offer orientation flights to the cadets in Civil Air Patrol to get them excited about flying. And Civil Air Patrol offers flight scholarships to help the cadets um, continue their training. And the most exciting mission about Civil Air Patrol is emergency services. Um, as I mentioned before, Colonel Harris and I uh, participated in disaster relief with the hurricanes, delivering food and ice to senior citizens who, um, who, whose homes were devastated after the storms. But Civil Air Patrol also participates in search and rescue missions. Uh, for example, if a, if a plane was to crash, Civil Air Patrol could be called out to send out a ground team or an air crew to search for the, the plane and the survivors. Um, which is very important. We actually do 95% of all of the search and rescue missions for the United States Air Force. Colonel Harris, another question of interest, especially since here in South Florida is where the 9-11 terrorists got their training and planned their foul and vicious crimes. Uh, tell us a little bit about the U.S. Air Force Auxiliary's role in anti-terrorism in Homeland Security. Well, we are uh, uh, on ever-ready demand uh, from Homeland Security for various missions that we can assist them on. And of course, as Christine uh, mentioned, for FEMA, we did provide 44,000 meals to those residents in this one community after the hurricane, uh, which were the MREs, the Meals Ready to Eat, and they were provided to us by FEMA, which is a federal emergency management agency. Uh, we also uh, provide services for the Air Force, as I mentioned, and of course, we are on demand call by any of the federal and government agencies that need us for whatever purposes they have or whatever needs are cropping up in their areas. One of the current programs that we're constantly uh, working on right now, uh, we have flown uh, 50,000 hours on the British Petroleum oil spill in the Gulf. And uh, we have had 23 uh, planes flying constantly uh, through three states, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Florida, checking the coastline and the oil spill drift. We have checked all of the wetland areas and taken photos. We take uh, photo reconnaissance uh, missions constantly along the coast and provide those to the government agencies that need to know what the drift is of the spill. And we have been flying that for 23 days constantly, and uh, we have uh, constantly flown uh, the areas of the wetlands and the barrier islands uh, where the spill is emanating. And what an atrocity against the environment that is, what a shame. It absolutely was an atrocity and it's one of the, that, one of the major disasters we've had against our, uh, our coastline and uh, we trust that the, uh, that the impact of it is not long lasting. We hope that we can actually mitigate whatever uh, damage has been done. I understand that a Civil Air Patrol was also the first plane above the Twin Towers during that horrific attack on the United States of America on 9-11. That's true. Um, immediately after the attack on the World Trade Center and the toppling of the two towers, every single plane in the entire East Coast was grounded. There was not one single airplane off the ground. They were all threatened uh, by the Air Force that they would be shot out of the air if they were uh, off the ground. So every single commercial, military, and uh, general aviation aircraft were down with the exception of one plane, and that was a Civil Air Patrol plane flying over uh, Ground Zero, uh, taking pictures for the agencies, uh, the city and the state agencies and the federal government. What a terrible event in our history that was. And of course, we mustn't forget for a moment all of those people in the military, men and women who are serving our country at this time. Christina, tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, projects taking place 
at the present time to support the troops. Well, Colonel Harris organizes um, drives for the troops, uh, books and things like that to, and to send over. I know around the holidays he likes to send blank cards um, and cards from us to the troops as well. Uh, what other sorts of things do you send? Well, Valentine's Day last year we sent 52,000 cards over to Iraq and Afghanistan for the troops to fill out and send back to their loved ones. So it was a return to cards that we sent out and uh, we were so thrilled that we, our initial target was 2,000 and actually we sent 52,000 to all of the uh, battalions and companies in Iraq and, and uh, Afghanistan and getting back from them notes showing appreciation and photographs of their actually holding our cards all the way back uh, over there uh, was quite thrilling. We were really quite pleased with the result of that. We're probably going to make that an annual program. Uh, we also send uh, regular care packages over to our troops over there uh, for personal needs that they're requesting and we get contributions from manufacturers and suppliers and producers etc. Colonel Harris, before we conclude, I have to ask you a question about that little device you brought with you. Tell our audience what it is. Uh, the planes that we were flying back uh, in the Civil Air Patrol submarine patrol days were certainly not the advanced equipment that we have today, uh, as is indicative of this little gadget here. This actually is a fuel gauge that was on the Piper Cubs that we used to fly every single day. And it's nothing more than a cork on this uh, metal rod and this is the cap for the fuel tank that we would fill. And this was right in front of us, in front of the windshield of the cockpit. And as we were flying, obviously we would burn fuel and that rod would start to come down and further down as we were using up our fuel. And when it got to about that height, we had better be on our final approach for our landing. Otherwise, we'd better get used to flying on fumes because that's the end of the fuel in the tank. And it was just amazing that we were able to fly our equipment with this kind of a, a, a gadget and the innovations that we have today. You compare this to that, it's night as today, but yet we did fly them and we did succeed in our mission uh, to defend our, our, our country. That is really very amusing and a real pleasure and honor to have you on the show, sir. Real pleasure. And pleasure. you, Christina, by me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll be right back. This brings us to the end of our special show for today about the United States Air Force Auxiliary Civil Air Patrol. Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm.